But this change in customs, you know, like, let's say you have a small kid and you send him to the grocery store and you tell him, be careful, don't talk to strangers. Now, do you have, don't talk to strangers, especially if they are priests. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I'm claiming, you see, what we should see is, I have a good Catholic friend in America, Gary Wills, who is kind of a critical Catholic, who wrote a good book on John Wayne and so on. He investigated it. They told me, what is so shocking is how, you cannot say, okay, in every institution there are pedophiliacs, there must be a... He told me he encountered a couple of cases where the guy, when he became a priest, was heterosexual. It was by being in the church that he turned... In other words, this pedophilia is clearly something which is the obscene other side, not of individuals, but of church at the instit as institution. It's, it's obscene from the, to caricaturize it to the end. I claim that an, in an ideal church seminar, faculty, university, you have through the day all the classes, history of Christianity, dogmatics, and then in the evening you have how to seduce boys or whatever. No, it's, it's immanent. It's immanent. It's part of church as the institutional structure. Uh, don't misunderstand me. I had a great admiration for Christianity and so on. But I'm talking now about Catholic Church specifically as an institution, which always played this game of, again, regulating violations. You know, to put it in the terms of the laws of Manu. Don't cheat off your wife, but if you cannot do it otherwise, it's better to, to have a prostitute than divorce, etc. You know, it regularizes all this. Now let's... Uh, let me make another crucial point. Uh, this tension between different levels is not just ideology. It can also work, it's much more ambiguous, in a wonderful, even ideological, critical way. It's also the space of art. What do I mean by this? Did you see a film which, for me at least, it's one of the greatest American films of the last 30, 40 years, Robert Altman, Shortcuts. People usually read that film, it tells parallel stories based on Raymond Carver's short stories about, let's call it, uh, desperate everyday life in American middle class suburbia, Los Angeles. Now, uh, people usually read this film in a pretty primitive way, you know, as some kind of a Marxist critique of... It's true, but you know where is the the other side of the story, the more optimist part. Not in any ultimate message, but in the very form of the film. This beautiful pluralist film, you know, seven, eight stories, <coughs> lines interacting in totally contingent ways with different, it can be a catastrophe, it can be a new friendship, this kind of a, if you know Spinoza, Spinozian pluralist open ontology of lucky encounters. So I find this very beautiful, how, what prevents us to read film simply as dark portrayal of alienated, desperate lives is the very form, the very narrative form of the film has another, has another message. My last point is you, or which was of you, I think you already mentioned it, I just want to confirm that how uh, the same ambiguity between the superficial Hollywood Marxism and very reactionary myth beneath, you find it even more, more radically in James Cameron's last one now, Avatar. Again, it appears progressive. Conflict between an imperialist power and on another planet, kind of a more authentic, connected with nature, tribe, and then the good American who joins forces with the rebels against the empire, getting the princess there, it sounds so progressive. But it's clear, as you draw my attention to that, it's, the whole film is, is basically white male Americans' dream. The dream of becoming the leader of an exotic, authentic tribe by marrying their, their princess. It's even very red, like the guy is crippled one. So, you know, you should also read the film as the one who is a cripple in America is nonetheless good enough to get the princess and, and, and become the leader. And also, all this, I'm very suspicious about this ecologically friendly authenticity of the tribe there. I think this is the worst, the most dangerous myth. One way racism functions today is under the guise, appearance of its opposite. 
you, you idealize others as, you know, like, which is why, if you are willing, as a, I hope, some kind of a feminist, I would like to give you, and then if you just allow me some concluding, some concluding, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean it seriously what I will say now. You are a woman, let's say, you have to choose between two boyfriends. One is a male chauvinist who tells you, listen, women are more, I will work, you clean the apartment, you wash my things, stick to him. Maybe you will turn him around, maybe you can do it. But you have then another boyfriend who tells you something like, I am a male chauvinist, uh, imperialist, I'm too rationalist, exploiting nature, you as a woman are much more holistic, you are in harmonious <laughs> dialogic relations, <coughs> you don't exploit nature, run away as fast as you can. <laughs> He is the truly dangerous one. And uh, this is what my American, not Indians, the other Indians, I have some friends among them. Uh, they, I don't want to use the term Native Americans. They told me they hate it. It's, it's politically correct, but it's more, what is, do they mean? They, one of them told me Native Americans. Does it mean you are cultural? We are natural, native or what? And they told me a wonderful, they told me I prefer to be called Indian. Because at least my name is a monument to white men's stupidity, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Not America is India or whatever. But they did this patronizing. They told me a wonderful thing. They told me, you know how you humiliate us when you apparently understand us? It's like when one of us commits a crime. Oh, we should understand it. They are oppressed and so on. You don't even give us the, the dignity of being able to be genuinely evil, you know? We are like children, you know, we are not responsible if you are, so, but that's another story. So I want, uh, let's not get lost here, let me go on. With, first, I don't have time to go into it, but I want a little bit to make a hint at how things are changing here. Maybe, what, I don't know what it means, but just I know, did you notice how the last, in the last years, Hollywood is consciously Consciously, okay, systematically abandoning this formula of creation of the couple. And I don't think it's a good sign. Uh, well, I'm talking about big hits which determine us ideologically. Avatar, they, they do. Sorry? They do couple. They? Avatar, they do get couple. They do, yes, they do. Which is why it's an old fashioned film. Okay. But did you see the last James Bond, uh, uh, Quantum of Solace? Did you notice it's the first, till now, it's the big feature of every, call, at the end you have this, it's even a very nice psychoanalytic dialectic, the rule is James Bond and his girl finally make love, but then they discover they are observed usually, you know, and then all this ambiguity, will they, uh, I mean the, the message is for me clear, they just pretend to make love to impress the case or whatever. Uh, but here they don't do it. Then. What is supposed to be the absolute heat, which I really hate? All these Dan Brown novels. Did you notice already in Da Vinci Code, no love affair? And it's something very uh, tragic here. In what sense tragic? How would you read? I hope you saw it. Don't read it. I mean, I like Schund, Kitsch, and so on. But it has to be of a certain quality. <laughs> and so, uh, 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 you know what happened? You know the story, no? Uh, uh, all this blah 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 is uh, Robert Langdon, whatever the symbology is, the woman who at the end we discover she's the grand 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 niece, whatever of Jesus Christ and so on. No sex between the two. You know what's my idea here? Was it popular also here that X Files series? Yes. My friend, the British psychoanalyst Darian Leader, provided a wonderful formula for uh, X Files. He said, Why do all these things ha have to happen out there? Aliens, to cover up the fact that nothing happens here. <laughs>